ready to put a new cap in there. So let me show you how I'm doing that. And my glove I put on. Then I take these forceps and clamp them on the end of it. Turn the heat gun on. We'll clean this up too, get, some, get the wax off the outside of it. Well, pretty messy. Uh, most of that foil that you see come out of this high voltage cap and I still haven't got it all out. Uh, unfortunately, it's just destroying the outside of the tube, so I'm just going to make some new ones like I did on the electrolytics or something. Well, I think I counted 18 before I started. But anyway, I've done all of those, got them cleaned off. And it took me about an hour. And I went ahead and made two more new tubes for the high voltage caps. Oh, so here's my two tubes I made for these two white caps. And then I have a smaller tube that goes on this cap. This is actually the correct value for these two 6kV orange ones here. They are .0005. It would be nice if I had the same value on the outside of the cap. If I had a smaller tube some sort I can make another tube and just mimic the numbers on this I'm gonna look around and see what I can come up with here's the labels I have on my computer ready to be printed so hopefully that'll work out okay we'll put some water slide paper in the printer and print these out and see what they look like all right ready to restuff these caps I'll show you the way I do it, several ways it can be accomplished, but we're going to start with this one. This is a .05. So I put the cap in, bend the lead over one end. And then I have my brown hot glue. And we'll put it in the other end. We'll let that dry. Fill up the other end. This stuff will string out on you, but it'll wipe off once it dries. Once it dries, so first one's done. As I begin to restuff these old paper caps sleeves. I'm not going to take these new ones out. I'm just going to restuff the older caps first and then I'll replace them one at a time. Because I always like to put one in, check the set, make sure it's still okay, and then proceed. Don't want to change eight or ten at a time. Then if you got a problem, you got a lot of tracing to go back and do to figure out what you did wrong. So we'll we'll get them stuffed, the old sleeves stuffed, and then we'll start changing these. I have just a few more caps to finish up. And these tubes are pretty large for these caps. A lot of space around them there, so to keep them having to use so much glue. I just cut these little cardboard pieces. Push them down there about like that. And then maybe a quarter inch of glue. And same thing on the other side. 
I'm just guessing at the shape of these, the size, it's not that critical. Just something for a spacer to fill up that void. And then take a little punch, punch a hole in it. Well, here's the first high voltage cap that I put the label on. And just dip it in the water. Let's get her put on here. And just wipe it off a little. Do these do these larger high voltage caps and I've got it trimmed the length of the tube so we have all of our old paper caps restuffed and here's our four electrolytics ready to go back in. Well, we've got a little problem that's developed on the Halocrafters. Well, I still have a picture. Got my little three inch test tube hooked up. I noticed when I bolted this bracket down that the CRT goes in, when I would bolt it to the chassis, our high voltage would be reduced somewhat. She has some high voltage leak coming through this Bakelite socket here. And I've taken it apart, took it out of this bracket. I've cleaned it. I've even put some Corona dope around the perimeter of it. Thinking, well, maybe it had a crack in it or something, but no change. We still I lay it on just a, that part of it. You got about 2500 volts right there so we'll be replacing this whole socket and it should fit right back in the metal carriage but in the meantime I'm going to go ahead and start changing the, the caps put in the new electrolytics that I've stuffed and the new ones I made and and we'll go ahead and get started on that first one in and I just Used a pop rivet, original bracket. So let's try it and make sure it works, and then we'll go to the next one. Okay, that's one, two, three, and we got one more. And it goes right in here. That's all of the main electrolytics. So now we're going to start changing all the paper caps. I'm going to start up here and go down, but I'll change one, try the set, make sure it still works, then go to the next one. All right, here's a new CRT socket I'm going to put on. Just like the old one, except a little thicker on the back side. Two screws in here that hold the two sections together. Take them screws out, run the wires through the back section, sort them to the terminals, put it back together. Let's just stop that high voltage leakage that's coming out of this old socket.
there's a new socket. It was quite a job uh, to get that back portion to slide on all of these wires. It really has some sharp solder connections, no globs or anything where them wires would or where them connectors would slide up through that back. But we got it on there. Let's see how we did. Now let's see if we got any voltage leaking on that socket. Alright, nothing showing up, so I think that took care of it. Before I put the chassis back in the TV, just have it playing here with the little 3 inch test tube. It's been going for a couple of hours now, so I think we're good. A couple of things I did. When I was disassembling this set, I noticed it had a, or a phono jack on the speaker, and I thought, well, somebody's put that on there. That's not, that's not original. And there was no plug on the end of the speaker wires. But that jack apparently is original. As I have this model T54 Halocrafters, future future restoration. And I took a peek in it, and amongst all the dirt, I think you can see there's a phono jack on that speaker. And a phono plug on the speaker wires. So I think that was original to the set. That's going to be a fun one to do. It looks to be almost original inside. I've already taken a peek of the chassis. But anyway, we'll get to that on a future video. I just have these screw-on phono plugs that I've got several of, so I just put one of them on the speaker wires. And it plugs into the speaker. So, that'll work on that. Now, I haven't done this too often on these little 7-inch sets, but... I put a separate filament transformer for the picture tube. Probably wasn't necessary, but I think it gives a little more protection on the for the CRTs because they're getting hard to find. Get a some kind of a short on a in the filament line or a tube goes out, puts more voltage into the picture tube when it's in that serious string, and that can overstress it we don't want to knock out one of those seven JP4s so put a filament transformer just for the picture tube so let me show you I gotta tip the chassis up and I'll show you how I did that first you'll notice here where I extended the filament wires just put a little fastener here on top of the high voltage cage keeps the wires away from the tubes because they get pretty hot. Here's a filament transformer I mounted underneath. That's for the 7JP4. AC on this side, 6.3 volt coming out. And because I've eliminated the 7JP4 in the filament string, I just put this 16 ohm resistor across the connections where the 7JP4 filament used to be. One more look under the chassis. I'm, I'm happy with the way it turned out. Looks really, really original now with those restuffed caps. Okay, I'm going to let this play for probably an hour or so before I put everything back in the cabinet. Seems to be working fine. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. And we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel. Thanks.